In this video, we'll discuss measures of spread for quantitative data. So we've looked at numerical summaries at the center of the data, measures of central tendency, the mean and the median. For variation, we'll now include the range, the quartiles and the interquartile range, the variance, and the standard deviation. When we talk about spread or variability, we have to think about it this way. If all the values were the same in our distribution, then they would all be equal to the mean and there would be no variability. There would be no changes. Everything would be the same. When things are not all the same, that's when variability exists. And there are different ways that we measure that. We measure the range, the quartiles, the variance, and the standard deviation. The range is the first way we look at it. It's kind of the simplest way to measure spread. We just look at the smallest and the largest. We subtract the smallest from the largest to get the range. So if our smallest value is 5 and our largest value is 95, our range is 95 minus 5, which is 90. Now the range is really strongly affected by outliers. Because what if you had all of your data between 80 and 90, except for that one, or 80 and 95, except for that one five? Well, that five is telling you that the range is now 90, but everything else is in a much smaller range between 80 and 95. Next thing we're going to talk about for a measure of spread is the quartiles. So when we talked about measures of central tendency, we talked about the median. And that was the number greater than or equal to the lower half of the data. It was right in the middle. It split it between lower half and upper half. So this right here is our median. And we call that the, third, the second quartile, quartile 2. Now if we look at the first half of the data, if we split that in half, we get the first quartile. If we look at the second half of the data, if we split that in half, we get the third quartile. On a uniform distribution, it would look like this. We'd have the first quartile up to Q1, the second quartile up to Q2, or the median, third quartile up to Q3, here we would have the max at this end, and we would have the min at this end. So to obtain the quartiles, first of all you put the data in order, just like the median. You put the data in order. And you find the median now. Remember, that splits it in half. And that's quartile two. Now to get the first quartile, quartile 1, you're going to look at the lower half of the data values. Those to the left of the median. So don't include the median. Everything to its left. And find the median of that half of the data. That's quartile 1. For quartile 3, you're going to look at the upper half of the data. Those to the right of the median. Again, do not include the median. And you'll find the median of that half. And that is quartile 3. Now the five number summary pulls all this together, showing both the center and the spread, because it includes the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. And it also shows us what the interquartile range is. That's Q3 minus Q1. So the range was the maximum minus the minimum. The interquartile range is the range of the middle 50% of the data. It tells us what the spread is of that middle 50%. So now we're getting more information about the variability 
of our distribution by including those other numbers. And a box plot is simply a way to graphically display a five number summary. So on a box plot, you'll have a line for the minimum, right here. You'll have a line at quartile one. You'll have a line at the medium. You'll have a line at quartile three. And you'll have a line at the max. So you take each of the five numbers from the five number summary and you draw a line for them. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to box in the interquartile range here and draw lines out to the minimum and the maximum. Now the center box of the box plot is spanning that interquartile range. And we're going to call an observation a suspected outlier if it's more than one and a half times that range above the third quartile or below the first quartile. So that now gives us a little bit of more information about what an outlier is. We've been just thinking about outliers are the ones that are really big or really small. Well, how big or how small? Now we know we want to take the interquartile range and multiply it by one and a half. And then we would add that to the third quartile, and anything above that would be an outlier. Or subtract it from the first quartile, and anything below that would be an outlier. Now remember, we said at the beginning that variability exists when some values are not equal to the mean, when they're either above or below. Well, we can look at each value and see how far away from the mean each value is. And those are what we call deviations from the mean. It just means how far away is it. And then we'll look and see, well, what's typical for a deviation from the mean? What's a standard deviation? And we know that if we have small numbers for our standard deviation, then that's going to show us we have small variability in our data. Large values of a standard deviation will indicate large variability. But be careful with that idea of small values and large values because that's relative to the data itself. If you're talking about home prices, and you're saying you have a mean of 250,000 and a standard deviation of 2,000, that's a small standard deviation. But if you're talking about something that's the range of data is from like, you know, 100 to 900, 300 in that case would be a large standard deviation. So we're talking relative to the data we have, large or small. Now here is the formula for what we call variance. Your calculator will do this. It's good to do one or two by hand, get, get an understanding for what you're doing. But let me kind of unpack this formula for you. First of all, n is the number of data points you have, the number of observations. This symbol right here means summation, add up whatever comes next, okay? What are we adding up? For each value, x sub i, so the first value is x sub 1, second value is x sub 2, all the way up to the last value being x sub n, each one of them you take it and you subtract the mean of all the data. And then you take what you get when you subtract it and you square it. So you'll have, you'll end up with a number for each of the observations. So if you have 10 observations, you would do this 10 times. Take each observation, subtract the mean, square it. Add that to the next observation, subtract the mean, square it. Okay? And then you would take all of that and divide the whole thing by n minus 1. 
and that gives us a number that we call the variance. And when we take the square root of that, we have the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So this, all of this under the radical sign is the variance formula. And S is the symbol that we use for standard deviation of any sample that we have. Okay, so let's look at an example. This one's in your textbook on page 50. And it looks at the metabolic rates of seven men. The number of calories, or kilocalories actually, they burn in a 24-hour period. And we can see that this data ranges from a minimum of 1362 to a maximum of 1867. So to find the range of this data, we would subtract, and we would get 505 kilocalories. So that's the range. The median is 1614. I'm sorry, this is not in order. We can't call that the median. We have to put this in order. So to do that would be 1362, 1439, 1460, 1666, 1614 that should be, now 1666. 1792 and 1867. It did not come out terribly neatly, but I think you can all read it. So now we look for the middle value. That's our median. See the little one there? So that's our median. That would make this quartile 1 and this quartile 3. Okay. So on to finding the variance in the standard deviation. If we take each observation, the mean ended up being 1600. You can easily calculate that yourself. And take each its deviation from the mean and then square that deviation from the mean and add them all up together. Okay. Then we'll take that sum of all those deviations and we'll divide it by n minus 1. That gives us a variance of 35,811.67 and then we'll take that square root and we'll get a standard deviation 189.24 calories. How do you know when to use what to show your center and your spread? We well, you have to remember that outliers seriously affect the values of the mean and the standard deviation. So if you have a skewed distribution or a distribution with outliers, you want to use a five number summary to describe your center and your spread. The times that you would use the mean and the standard deviation are when you have a reasonably symmetric distribution that doesn't have outliers.